Bike Daisuke Hashiria Tamashi Rider Spirit is a conventional arcade racing game that just falls flat of being a good alternative to Super Mario Kart. It certainly has its own little spins on the Mario Kart formula, but none of them are executed better than the source material. That's not to say the game isn't any fun, as it still has the essence of a good kart racer. You can take your pick from a cast of 8 bike-loving characters. Although, two of them are on scooters, so more like six bike-loving characters and two pro-scooterers who just happen to show up. Each have their own unique stats, like the two dirt bikers have fast speed and medium handling, while the sisters have great handling but poor speed. So there's still an element of strategy for who you should pick. If you're going to copy Mario Kart, the most important element to capture are the controls, and thankfully the developers of Rider Spirit knew that. So the controls are instantly familiar and easy to pick up and play having any prior knowledge of Mario Kart. Speaking of which, B is the gas, and the only button you should press on the main menu unless you want to see this logo a billion times. Y is your brake, A is used to activate a speed boost of which you have 3 to use each race, X is for using weapons, and the L and R triggers are used to drift. The graphics are up to par with Mario Kart, so they look great for the time and still hold up in the hearts of many Mode 7 lovers like myself. Tracks do seem to have a rather bland palette of earthy colors, but I won't hold that against the game too much, as most of the tracks take place in more real-life environments than the cartoonish tracks of Super Mario Kart. But that leads to one of the biggest problems in this game, the lack of stage variety. You start with your typical racetrack with green grass and bright blue skies, zip through the streets of a night-fallen city, race for the prize in the desert, and finish off with two different stadium levels, all of which are a pleasure to race through and offer their own gimmicks like treacherous mud puddles, speed reducing sand, or jump pads to get ahead. But completing the first cup and heading over to the second is met with disappointment when you find out the tracks you just raced are essentially the only ones in the game, as the higher cups only remix the existing tracks. Sure, the remixes are fun to race through and add extra challenge, but the lack of variety just brings the will to keep playing to a halt when Super Mario Kart kept things fresh by introducing new courses in each cup. Despite my constant comparisons, this game does have its fair share of differences from Super Mario Kart. The most obvious being the odd screen layout. The top half consists of your two side mirrors, and the bottom half is your play screen. This is certainly a strange decision, and one that has thrown me off on more than one occasion after picking up the game, having not played it for a while. Another change is that weapons are acquired by going through the pit stop rather than scattered around tracks. I kind of like this because of the risk-reward strategy. Do I go out of my way to get a weapon and risk losing my spot, or do I get a weapon in hopes of gaining a position? It adds a tiny bit more depth to the game. Unfortunately, they don't work in the same way. Rather than advantageously being able to use them whenever, you have to wait for the icon to flash in the top corner, and then you can let people have it. Like right here, I just want to use my weapon, but I can't because it's not flashing. Another small issue I have is that your weapon button is X, which is kind of awkward to press with your thumb on the gas. Most of the times, I end up accidentally pressing Y and using my speed boost instead, resulting in instant regret. On the plus side, you can hold up to three weapons at a time, and their effects are pretty good, especially the lights out weapon, which is lethal. There is a two player split screen mode and time attack mode where you can race your ghost, both of which help squeeze more mileage out of the game. I'd say the two player mode is definitely the reason to get the game, as it's best enjoyed in short bursts. The music is whimsical in that Mario Kart kind of way, with bells and whistles chiming in on most songs, which keep the arcade racing vibe going steady. But most songs are rather forgettable, as I can't really remember any of the songs off the top of my head while writing this review. Rider's Spirit is definitely not a bad game, but not a great game either. Even with the changes it brings to the table, the few but harmful problems keep it from living up to the game it's so desperately trying to emulate. The game is pretty rare and hard to find, but it doesn't command a lot of money, 
So if you find yourself wanting a copy, then it'll run you about $15 to $25, which is a decent price for what it's worth. If you've exhausted Super Mario Kart and are looking for a similar experience, this game is a decent replacement. But for a much more fulfilling experience, stick around for Super Mario Kart Ripoffs Part 2.